I'm still replaying it in my head, I swear. So a guy came at us asking if we wanted fine clothes. And he was like, oh, you look like the kind of person that would uh, um, like elegant clothes. And I was like, wow, really? Don't you see how we're dressed? And then Morte disappeared. Kidnapped by two werats that must have been somehow accomplices to the guy selling clothes. <laughs> so, I'm left speechless. I can't react. My my fight or flight response uh, didn't work. I, I I had the freeze response. They should they should call it the flight or f freeze or fight response. I have the freeze response. That's my response right. usually. <laughs> oh. oh, look at these things! My God, these little models look so nice. You can really understand very well how the creature looks and uh, how they are dressed. And look at the sounds they make. Look at the sounds. You have a hat. Your hat says volumes about you. That's very unfashionable, but whatever floats your boat. They make they make cute sounds. My god, I already forgot that we are without Mort. <laughs> oh god. My brain we have Sebastian Sebastian here. Santia. Kina, Lower Ward Townsperson, Byron Pickett, Korur, Hail uh, uh, Chin, Oh, Pouch? Is that a pouch I can fill with things? Are these beans? Because they're huge. These guys are staring at the barrels. Look at these harmonium officers. Oh, finally I see one. So they're they're policing this district because this district is more important than the hive. Look at this door. What? It's not a door. The purpose of this device is unknown. It appears to be some sort of drawbridge. Yeah, it looks like a drawbridge. Li drawbridge like contraption. I wouldn't step on it. It moves. It's almost like a catapult, but weird. It looks very nice, though. It looks like a piece of a starship or something. You know, we still have that... Uh, oh, this Harmonium Officer has a name. Uh, it looks like the first person we should talk to. Um, I was thinking that we still didn't find out the mystery about the mosaic room in the catacombs. And I hope I can still access that. Because I want to go back to Farod's room to see if his stash is anywhere to be seen. But more importantly, we don't know that Farod is dead. I mean, we know because we have watched a cutscene, but we don't really know. You see a Harmonium Officer. He gives you a bored look as you approach readings. He gives you a bored look, greeting citizen. Measure three Vorten at your service. Questions. He sighs. I don't mean to be rude, but I am on duty and have no time for questions. He pauses. If you would like information, go talk to Ab Crickness. But I already talked with the Abcrickness. Is this the same Abcrickness? He's an old friend of mine. I think he considers himself to be a tout now, so he can give you the chant concerning just about anything. Okay, he's redirecting me to a person I'm we gone. have already talked with. Oh, there are tags here too. Let's talk with Korur. 
You see a middle-aged man wearing dusty clothes. He does not appear to be in the best of health. His skin is pale yellow, and you see an occasional pustule along his arms. Everybody seems to be quite sick around this town now. Greetings, I suppose. He turns and glances at you from behind the hollow eyes. His eyes narrow in suspicion as he continues to glance around. What do you want? His voice is raspy. Um, he turns his attention to you. Why are you bothering me for? I look the part of a tout. You seem, you, you seem to be a knowledge individual that I can learn from. I mean, while I was looking at him, it looked to me like a warrior that could, could bump up my skills. <laughs> a little bit, I don't know. He sighs, what you be wanting to know? Who are you then? He gives you a slight bow. Name's Coror. I'm in my day I was a pretty good warrior. He pauses and sighs. Well, them days is over, but I still know a trick or two. Can you teach me? Well, why not? Are you sure you want to give up your current pro profession? <clears throat> but I'm a, I am a fighter. So warrior is a profession? Um, I don't understand anything anymore. Are you feeling alright? Nothing. A few years of death won't cure. He coughs and looks up. Air has been getting worse in the world of late. By my reckon, it should level out once the great foundry settles. Or a wind blows through from the spire. What is with the air here? It's mostly because of all the portals. He has a coughing fit and then returns his attention to you. What do you mean? It's drafting? <laughs> Lots of doors to the lower planes here, letting bad air and fumes and such from who knows what layer of the abyss. That's why this here is the lower world, he laughs. A jump through his area. Through this area is like breathing in a meal. Salt, smoke, pipe weed. It's all a yellow blankets of smoke and stinging of sulfurous gas that this word spits out. He gives you a gap to the smile. Pretty pretty, eh? What about this foundry? Center of the world. Oh, center of the world, pretty much. Uh, look for the stacks. Them godsmen make a bunch of things out of iron nothing fancy but they work add to the bad air of god's men the believers have their keep in the great foundry banging and singing and chanting their barmy silliness on being powers in the next 10 upon 10 and a bunch of other 10 lifetimes ah, he rolls his eyes then spits a brown mass from his mouth all they do is suffer and slave and work. I slave twice as hard and no way am I going to be any sort of power. You understand me, Burke? He loves hollow. Yes, I do. I had a skull and it's being stolen from me. Do you know anyone who would do such a thing? He looks a little comfortable. Missing a skull, are you? Well... Now, you never heard such from me, but there's people in these parts that, he glances around, make a living by collecting heads of the dead. Work for a basher named Lothar. They call them the master of the bones. Where can I find him? He frowns. Now, that's dangerous, wigwag. If I were to say anything, which I'm not, I would say to keep an eye out for a gutted building here in the world. Mayhap you would find something there, eh? He glares at you, but you never heard such from me, eh? Okay. But, uh, yeah, you see, w it, it says now, I want to be a better warrior. Anything interesting to see? Uh, he concentrates for a moment. Well, there's the tower. It seems to come up in the chant a lot. What about this tower? 
Ha, he laughs, but it soon breaks into coughing. One of the more damnable mysteries of this world. Here, tell, it simply dumped itself in sigil one day, many, many years ago. No idea where it came from, how it got there, or how to get in the damned thing. It takes up space and looks like a sight. All them acid burns, weapons cars, it looks like it's been it's seen a few hundred wares it does. Well, I mean, an alley just split. So I'm not surprised that a tower just popped up. No, I ain't. <sighs> anything else? Can't think of anything of interest. What about this world specifically? Uh, he looks at you like you're crazy. You clueless craftsmen, shops, warehouses. All have they keep here, he screams at you. His eyes somewhat blurry. Are you looking for something in particular? Armors, maybe? What's there to do around here? He studies you for a moment and looks at you knowingly. You're looking to get your iron tempered, maybe? He laughs, which breaks into coughing. None of them places near might try some of the keeps in the other worlds. That's what you be after. Excuse me? He laughs again, which breaks into an even greater fit of coughing. Sorry, Cutter, never you mind. You're losing. You're looking for something in particular? What about works? If you be looking for work, then your luck's run dry. Little enough to go around for those who live here. Buying things? If you're looking to buy an item or two or peddle some higher merchandise, then I would make one one's way to the open air market. He starts coughing again. What about that? He gives you a wicked smile. You can buy and sell there, Burke. It'd be a market. What else is there to say about it? I don't know. Well, Done. so we have things to do, things to do. Oh, thank God I didn't forget about that stuff. So, um... Endure. In enduring, grow strong. I Maybe we should find Morte directly. Oh, Ingress Steed. I hear your words. Oopsie. Done. I want to talk with these people. I want my curiosity sat satiated. Zerb. This huge creature stands over nine feet tall, rippling muscles to support its massive frame. It seems to be engaged in conversation with two similar creatures next to it. Hello. He turns at your greeting and begins to look about. After a moment, he looks down and notices you. A look of confusion crosses his features. What do you want of there? I don't know, it's the first time I see something like you and I'm pretty rude. <laughs> he gives you an apologetic look and shakes his head. Zerb not speak language well, sorry you talk torp. He gestures to one of the creatures next to him, alright? Torp. A greetings, Torp. He looks down at you and gives you a friendly smile. What do you want, Smolly? I have questions. You got question. Maybe Torp got answer. He's so polite. He's smiling. That's weird. What, what are you? He smacks himself in the chest with a thunderous blow. Torp. He raises his arms above his head and shakes his fist at the sky. Mighty warrior is Torp. All Tokola are mighty warriors. So you are Tokola. He places his fists on his hips and glares at you. Who are you? I don't remember my name. He nods at you as he examines your scars. You got mighty scars. You must be great warrior like Torp. He frowns and nods wisely. You got hit on the head too many times. Not remember name. Some day it come back. <laughs> okay. You got question, maybe Torp got, Torp got answer. What are you doing? Ah, what about this world? Okay. He stares at you for a moment and shrugs. Torp not, no. Torp new here. He gives you a childish smile. Torp here for fun. What kind of fun? He barks out a laugh and, and, out a laugh and smiles at you. Torp here with friends. He gestures at the nearby Tokola. 
We're gonna barge a flying lizard. He lets out a roar and begins to pound his chest with fists the size of hams. Ah, oh, a flying lizard. He nods his head and begins to make crawling motion. Lizard, you know, but it fly. He begins to flap his arms like a huge misshapen bird. Eventually he settles down and looks at you expectantly. expectantly. You mean a dragon? He snorts and raises to his full height. Torp good, but he not that good. Someday Torp wants to barge dragon. He stares off into the distance with a longing expre expression than size. But this not that day. Well, if it's not a dragon you're talking about, then what is it? Torp not remember what Xantia call it. He pauses to think. It lizard. Tall as Torp. Oh, you mean a fiend? Tall as Torp. Walk on back legs. Got wings. Got clothes. Red in color. Oh, I don't know if there are red fiends. Think she say they called Abishai? He pauses then shrugs. Abishai! Yeah. I've heard of something called an Abishai. Is that what you mean? Updated my journal. His eyes light up and he gives you a joyful smile as he nods his head. Yes, Abishai. Flying lizard. The Torp and friends barge real good. The Torp be warrior of stature then. Xanti accept apology. What? <laughs> What's this about Xanti and an apology? Torp take friends to tavern last night. Torp get stinking drunk. Fall on Xantia's table. Spill drinks all over her. She looks he looks embarrassed. Xantia says she not accept apology unless Torp be warrior of stature. So killing an Abishai is supposed to give you stature? My journal. He shrugs. Xantia says so. Torp not know. You, uh, I don't think you should go around uh, killing uh, a random Abishai because I think they are citizens here like regular citizens you can dislike them as much as you want but you can't go bashing them in the face I don't think so hmm <sighs> Let's talk with this one. I lungs feel like a chimney. You see a pretty young woman in fine clothes. Her skin lacks the usual yellow tint of the inhabitants of this world. She appears to be watching three nearby creatures with interest. Yeah, greetings. She turns to face you. An annoyed look crosses her face. Yes, what do you want? Who are you? My name is Xantia. She looks you up and down and frowns. Is there something else you want? She looks irritated. So what are you doing then? There's going to be a fight and I want to see it. She smiles wickedly. It should be interesting. Hmm, a fight? Yes. See, the three Tokola over there, she points to three hulking creatures with rippling muscles. They're going to try to kill an Abishai, she snorts. The stupid oafs. I've heard of something called an Abishai. What exactly is it? Yeah, we don't really know. I mean, they look like fiends. But I, we don't really know what Abishais are. It's a lower plains creature, a bat as you, I think. She frowns in thought. In any case, Abishai have nasty dispositions, sharp crow, claws, and can cast spells. Ooh, very formidable. The Tokola look like they can take care of themselves, but, but magic might be a problem for them. Normally I would say yes, Tokola are very powerful warriors. She smiles slightly and leans in to whisper to you. However, I know something they don't. What might that be? Abishai can only be hurt by magic. Yeah, exactly. She sneakers. The Tokola will be slaughtered. I have no doubt of it. She straightens up and watches the Tokola eagerly. And you're just letting them die? For what reason? How do you know they can only be hurt by magic? She gives you an annoyed look. My husband is very high up in the Harmonium. The Harmonium guards are trained to deal with creatures such as Abishai. She looks away. That's how I know. My husband told me. Why don't you warn the Tokola? Why should I do that? She smiles evilly. I'm the one who suggested the fight. Why? 
My husband tries to do better to better his social standing with his underlings by drinking with them in the local taverns. Last evening he forced me to just such an occasion. Those three oaths were there boasting of their prowess as warriors. It was obvious they were in a drunken stupor when they decided to leave one of them tripped and fell into the table I was sitting at. And so? She frowns angrily. Most of the drinks at the table spilled the into my lap and ruined a very expensive evening gown. So while the cretin was trying to apologize, I whispered to him that I only accepted the apology of a warrior of stature. If he were truly such a warrior, he'd be able to defeat an Abishai in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> You're going to get them killed because of because they ruined the dress? Updated my journal. You obviously, obviously do not understand the intricacies behind this, situ this situation. She looks at you like you are an idiot child. I was embarrassed and humiliated in front of my husband and his underlings. Well, I see. What about this word? Nothing. She looks about with distaste. Were it not for the fight, I wouldn't be caught dead here. Hmm. Um, Torp. Um, I've talked to Xante. She said you're going to fight an Abishai, right? Actually, you said you're going to fight an Abishai. Um, he smiles and nods at you enthusiastically. That's right, Torp and friends apart. Um, I've learned, uh, well, uh, not I've learned. I know that Abishai can only be hurt by magic weapons. Updated my journal. It gives you a worried look. Need magic? How you know? Well, um, I don't know if I should out Xantia. Because I kinda try to solve situations without getting people involved. I want her to be punished. Like, I have the, f the you know, the desire to see her punished and uh, probably kicked in the mud also. But I do not have a real reason to want that. Like, it's just to spare for spite, to spite because she's being um, selfish and stupid and she's probably letting this creature, this three creature die and these creatures are not very bright, they don't seem to be very bright, so she shouldn't take advantage. At the same time, I understand what kind of person she is, not necessarily a person I like, still. Well, everybody knows that about Abishai's. Torp not have magic, friends not have magic, we die if we br barge Abishai, he sighs. Torp not be warrior of stature, Ka Xantia not accept apology. You were willing to risk your life for the honor of a lady, Torp, only a warrior of stature would do that. He stares at you blankly for a moment and then a huge smile appears on his face. Really? Torp and friends now have stature? <laughs> Why am I deciding this, really? Yes, consider Xantia's honor to be satisfied and the apology accepted. Torp, thank you. You save life. You save life of friends. He turns to the other Tokola and speaks to them hurriedly. After a moment, all three bow to you and each hands you a pouch of coins. Oh, you don't... Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> he smiles. You good friend, you deserve. Well, thank you. In knowing the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. I'm gone. I don't want to see them there. They're cute and they're doing nothing, really. So they got drunk. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> Sometimes. Um. So, you want to level up. All right, tell me. Okay, nothing. <laughs> By the way, I was um, uh, l looking around and my alignment already changed back to true neutral. I think because of that Dabus. 
that I accidentally led to death? Maybe there is another way to conclude that quest, but I'm okay with what I choose because I do. I did it g genuinely. I didn't mean to trap him or kill him. I didn't even know he was going to go in there. I didn't know that was part of a quest, so I'm I'm rolling with it. I don't consider it necessarily an evil thing to do because I didn't really have an option to. Uh, tell him that the hut was dangerous. Does she have anything else to do? You, she, you see Xantia, she gives you a look filled with hatred. You warned the brute, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. She smiles at you. Very well, play your games of deceit. No, you this, Burke. I do not forget an insult. Good day to you. Okay, I can't wait. I'm gone. It would be fantastic if she attacked me or something and I'd be able to talk whoever people she sends towards me to talk them out and telling them that I didn't uh, warn them. Yeah, but they could say that I warned them, so... Sebastian talk to you Sebastian Sebastian you see an older man in elegant robes he has bright eyes and a warm smile he gives you a slight bow as you approach good day Cutter I am Sebastian how may I serve you greetings greetings to you as well Cutter he stops in mid sentence as he notices your scars <laughs> your scars you see his eyes travel along them and his eyebrows arch in surprise he returns his gaze to you. I was about to ask what I could do for you, but there is no need. I think I see why you came to see me, Cutter. What, are you trying to say you can help me with these scars? He smiles at you and shrugs his shoulder. Perhaps, Cutter, perhaps. He leans forward and begins to examine your scars carefully. He runs a finger along several of them, mumbling to himself. Finally, he looks up at you. Yes, Cutter, I can help you. I cannot cure you, but I can alleviate the worst of your condition. And your price? Ah, yes, the price. He begins stroking his chin and stares at you. You get the impression you are being weighed, weighed somehow. He seems to come to some sort of a decision. I have a job that I think you could perform. Tell me the job. I have signed a contract with a certain creature. I am no longer able to fulfill the contract. It is beyond my abilities. However, the creature will not release me from the contract. Instead, it has threatened me with that unless I fulfill the contract. So you want me to solve this problem for you? He sighs. Yes, I cannot do it myself. My reputation demands that I fulfill the contract or face the consequences. I am at your mercy in this regard. Will you help me? What kind of creature are we talking about? Um, if he heals scars, maybe he gives me more constitution? More health? Maybe? Like... Uh, Oh my god, what was her name? Like the woman with the talons in, uh, in the mortuary. An Abishai <laughs> named Grozuk Cutter. He pauses to gauge your reaction. I know this is a difficult task, but one I think you can handle. Also, the reward I offer you is great. He gestures at your scar. What were you contracted to do? He shakes his head. I cannot reveal that information, Carter. I'm magically bound not to. That is why people come to me. They know that if I accept a contract, it will be handled with discretion. What? Hmm. Okay, so he is your client. Interesting proposal. Will you do it, Cutter? I don't know. I'll take it under consideration. He tries to hide his disappointment from, from you with a smile. I understand, Cutter. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, hmm. 
tell me about you. I am Sebastian, a mage of sorts. I do contract work for those who can meet my price. What kind? He gives you a slight smile and then shrugs his shoulder. Confidential work cutter. I am known for my discretion in getting deeds done. People come to me with the requests. If I can perform them, I do so. If I cannot, I don't. In either case, I keep silent. You hesitate to use the word mage. Why? He nods his head. Yes, I am not a mage cutter, but I can perform the art in my own way. I have forsaken the normal studies of magic and followed my own path. He pauses and shrugs his shoulder. It is easier to call me a mage than to argue the point. I had a talking skull and he was kidnapped. Can you help? He stares at you for some time before answering a skull. Well, if I were to hazard a guess, I would say that your skull is now in the possession of the Master of the Bones, which means you should get yourself another skull cutter. What can you tell me about him? He frowns and glances about for a moment. His name is Lothar and he does not appreciate the attention of others. others. I know nothing of him and can answer no question ab questions about him. You can actually see a hint of fear in his eyes. Let us speak of another subject, Cutter. Where, can I, where could I find him? He glances about nervously. A ruined house somewhere in this world lends to his demesne. I know nothing more. You can actually see a hint of fear in his eyes. What's going on around here? He looks at you suspiciously. What do you mean, Cutter? He looks around and spreads his arms as if to encompass the whole world. Life, Cutter. Life as usual, nothing more. What is this place? He gives you a quizzical look. Do you mean this market or this world of sigil? This world? This is the lower world. Cutter, home of the common people and the industrial side of sigil. It's not the slums of the hive, yet it holds no splendor such as the ladies' world. Tell me about the market. This is a common market, Cutter. There are many things for sale here. Spells, potions, information, ladies, men. <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, just about anything, if you can afford the price. Uh, he lets how out a short laugh and shrugs his shoulder. That depends on your point of view, Cutter. The rich say it's because this is the home of the common or lower classes. If you ask those who live here, it's because of the portals and the incident. Why, why it's called the lower wor world? What incident? Yes, he frowns as he pauses to think. A long time ago, this was no, known as the Prime World. The people new to the city were placed here and not allowed access to all of Sigil. There were many other restrictions placed upon them as well. Some Berg took offense to that and decided to form a rebellion. It went nowhere, of course, until he made a fascinating discovery. Yes. You see, there are a lot of portals in this area of the city, and most of them open uh, onto the lower plains. Well, that Barmy Berg found a way to open them all at once. He allowed anything that wanted to come through the portals into the city. It became quite bloody, a terrible war ensued. Anyway, that's why this is known as the Lower World, because of the portals. How did this person open all of the gates? He used an item that he either had commissioned or made himself. What was it called? He pauses to think for a moment. Ah, I remember, the shadow sorcered key. At the mention of the key, you begin to feel dizzy. The world around you freezes and everything turns grey. You sense a past memory trying to force its way into your consciousness. Updated my journal. The world around you fades and you find yourself in the darkened streets of sigil your heart is pounding trying to break free from your chest your breath comes in ragged gasps you've been running for hours it seems and yet you cannot stop you turn a corner and enter an alley finally slowing your flight you feel your strength fade as you lean against a nearby wall and try to catch your breath you become aware of something hard pressed into the palm of your hand. Glancing down, you open your clenched first fist to stare at the gem embedded in the flesh. Your body sags toward the wall until your forehead touches 
touches its cold, damp surface. Your eyes close and you force yourself to take slow, deep breaths. It, just as you feel your strength returning, you hear a faint noise and instantly snap to full awareness. You turn to look towards toward the alley mouth. At first you see nothing, just ghost visions caused by the shadows of the night. You are about to turn away when a slight movement catches your eye slowly. A female form glides around the corner, pauses and then turns to face you. Your eyes travel from her slender waist toward her full bosom and then her blade and shrouded face. Even in the darkness you can see her cold emotionless eyes. Is she the lady of pain? 